Of all the weirdness around this campaign, this is a truly strange thing to tell people, right? Don't vote. I don't need your vote. I don't want your vote. I mean, all the surface level weirdness is, you know, worth noting. Having a new position on literally anything you can think of as soon as any random rich guy tells you to. That's a weird thing. Picking the eccentric billionaire's intern for your running mate, even though you apparently had no idea who he was or what a disaster he is on television. All of this is weird. But telling voters, do not bother to vote for me. It doesn't matter if you do. I don't need your votes. That is a thing that should prick up your ears. Welcome back to Really American. I'm Kenny Hess. Now, folks, I'm going to be honest here. I haven't been a huge fan of the mainstream media for quite some time now. I think they really soiled themselves and their integrity with all the coverage of Biden's age and how he needed to drop out way before he actually did. And to be frank, they absolutely crapped the bed in that incessant coverage while simultaneously not saying a lick about how mentally unfit and deranged Donald Trump is and was throughout the entire process. Was it because they know he's good for ratings, late stage capitalism mixed with bad journalistic integrity, or just infinitely poor judgment on their part? Probably all of the above. But throughout all of that trough of garbage they tried to shove down our pie holes, thinking we'd slop it up like Fox News viewers, one person has continued to stand out above the rest and deliver mostly grounded and pointed reports about the actual issues at hand, and that person is, of course, Rachel Maddow. And in this video that honestly kind of slid under my radar because of how little mainstream news I tend to consume these days, as I'm sure many of you can relate to, Maddow manages to break through the mold of the mainstream media and talk about Trump in the way we all should be by referring to and exposing his deeply psychopathic behavior. And I want to share this with you, even though it's from last week, because of the importance of the message Maddow delivers, and because despite all the incredible energy and excitement around Kamala's campaign and the increasingly good polling data we've continued to see come in about her chances of beating Donald Trump in November, it is imperative that we remain vigilant and keep a watchful eye on the behind-the-scenes machinations of Donald Trump and his allies, as well as the truly anti-democratic and insidious nature of what he says and intends to do, both with power, and in this case, in order to get it. So with all that set up, let's revisit through Maddow's excellent reporting, comments Trump made just in the past couple weeks that were salacious and headline grabbing for a brief moment, but that Maddow brilliantly exposes for the deeper and darker nature of the plot behind them. But I said there's there's a lot going on at the, at the surface level in terms of donors and campaign positions and campaign strategy and the way they're behaving in public. There's a lot that is weird about this campaign thus far. But there is one last thing in terms of the weirdness of this campaign that I think is actually quite serious. Um, you probably heard this weekend that um, Donald Trump told an audience on Friday night that if they vote for him this November, if, if, if he's voted back into office this November, they will never have to vote again. He told an audience on Friday to, quote, get out and vote just this time. He said after this time, quote, you won't have to do it anymore. You won't have to vote anymore. He said, quote, in four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good and you're not going to have to vote. Now, this is not the first time Trump has told a campaign audience that they will never have to vote again once they vote him back in this time. And that is as alarming as it sounds for all the reasons that you immediately think it is, right? I mean, he, he's positing this like this is a happy thing. Oh, joy, never having the burden of voting again, right? The point of democracy is that we vote all the time and we like it. That's how we decide what happens in our country. He's promising his followers that he'll end all of that. And it just, it, it's exactly what you think it is. But let me also point out something more strange, which has been happening at the same time and it hasn't had as much attention. The day before Trump made those remarks on Friday, on Friday he said, you're never gonna have to vote again after you vote for me this one time. The day before that, on Thursday last week, he didn't say that people wouldn't have to vote anymore once he was elected this November. Now, the day before that, on Thursday, he told his supporters, not that they're not going to have to vote again, but that they don't have to vote this time, that they don't need to vote for him this November. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many yeah. votes. 
my instruction, we don't need the votes, I have so many votes. He said that on Thursday last week. And it turns out this is something, when you look, he says this all the time now. Watch. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. We don't need votes. I tell my people, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. I don't need votes. We don't need votes. We got more votes than anybody's ever had. You don't have to vote. Don't worry about voting. The voting, we got plenty of votes. Don't worry about voting. Of all the weirdness around this campaign, this is a truly strange thing to tell people, right? Don't vote. I don't need your vote. I don't want your vote. I mean, all the surface level weirdness is, you know, worth noting. Having a new position on literally anything you can think of as soon as any random rich guy tells you to. That's a weird thing. Picking the eccentric billionaire's intern for your running mate, even though you apparently had no idea who he was or what a disaster he is on television. All of this is weird. But telling voters, do not bother to vote for me. It doesn't matter if you do. I don't need your votes. That is a thing that should prick up your ears. Because what that means is that he doesn't think he needs to win the vote to win the election. He doesn't think he needs to win the election in order to take power. He thinks something other than votes is going to determine whether or not he gets back in the White House. At Rolling Stone today, they profile 70 different election officials who have been put into position in the swing states of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania who are election denialists, committed election denialists, officials that have been put in place in all of those swing states to make sure that election results, no matter what they are, do not get certified in those states this year. Quote, at least 22 of these election officials have already refused or delayed certification processes in recent elections. According to Democratic election lawyer Mark Elias, quote, I think we are going to see mass refusals to certify the election in November. Quote, Republicans are counting on not just that they can disrupt the election in big counties. They're counting on the fact that if they don't certify in several small counties, you can't certify statewide results. 70 officials in place across just the swing states. For all the surface level weird behavior and language and strange choices and incoherence and odd donors in the Republican campaign, the serious core at the heart of it is that they are not planning on the vote being counted as normal. They are not counting on the election results being tallied as normal. They are not counting on the vote. And in fact, Trump is now repeatedly saying the vote will not matter. He doesn't even want your vote. The Republicans are counting on the election results not being certified, thereby creating chaos in Washington around the results, just like 2020, right? Just like January 6, 2021, except this time with no Mike Pence in the way and with Republican officials already in place in multiple states saying, yeah, you may not get any sort of official vote. The weirdness of this campaign is astonishing 99 days out. The dislocation from real campaigning, though, the dislocation from actually asking, asking people for their votes, that means something. It means they are not trying to win this thing in a normal way. So 99 days out, as Democrats stand up what, by all accounts, looks like a juggernaut traditional campaign under Kamala Harris, are they prepared for this level of weirdness after the votes are cast? Are they ready for what's coming? Are they ready for what's coming? From the people who rioted and stormed the Capitol on January 6th and the same people calling consistently for a civil war in this country. Folks, we're all about feeling good on this channel and celebrating our victories. But Rachel Maddow is very right. Beating Donald Trump in November at the ballot box is only step one. Because even if we get that victory, the second battle starts of trying to stop him, his lackeys, and his MAGA supporters from dismantling democracy from the outside in instead of vice versa. Thank you for watching. You know what to do if you made it this far. Vote blue. We greatly appreciate you. For Really American, I'm Kenny Hess, and I'll see you all in the next one.